there's a way to be honest and still be kind. Andrew does not possess that. I would rather be honest with her and, and hurt her than to be dishonest with her and hurt her even more. Bless you. Hello everybody, welcome back to Taste of Reality. My name is Queenie for those who don't know me and we are reviewing Married at First Sight Australia season nine, episode seven. Okay, the gloves were off this episode. Woo! Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, bless you. And let's get into the episode. All right, so we're gonna start with Olivia and Jackson. So they had, bless you. They had um, the, it's, it's confessions week basically. So this week, all the couples moved in and now they're either doing the um, couple ranking, they're writing a letter of honesty or they're sharing something that they typically wouldn't share this early in a relationship. So Olivia and Jackson are first and they get to watch back their audition tapes in where, um, in which Jackson shares his story about having witnessed domestic violence with, um, with his sisters in relation to his mother and her partners. Seeing Jackson that upset and crying and very vulnerable it's really gut-wrenching i guess it's good to kind of just get it off and have someone to talk to it about and i feel very privileged that he felt like he could talk about it and share that part of his history with me and seeing how well he's looked after his mum and his sisters i just think that's so amazing hearing him talk about this really solidifies to me how much I like him as a husband. I'm very happy that they were put together because you can tell he has a nurturing, you know, character and she needs that. I'm just, I'm hoping to God, hoping to God that I, 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 I still need Olivia to be able to like find her own self-worth and not because Jackson, you know, likes her or is falling in love with her. Like, because relationships are ebbs and flows there are ebbs and flows there are peaks and valleys sometimes the feelings of love the feelings of attraction aren't always going to be there you need to have self-assurance high self-esteem to feel secure in a relationship even if you guys are kind of in the pits so great partnership they were very supportive um well he's been supportive of her and her sharing she's been supportive of him in this confessions week so it's great i'm just i'm just like Please, girl, do it for you. Like, love yourself for you. Up next is Sam and Al. So as we all remember, so someone in the comments was like, I think Samantha needs to lighten up. And I agree. I think that she should. But somebody like Al, I'm sorry. He needs to be with, with a girl who's like 22. He does. Because if you're a woman who is at the place where you want marriage, regardless of age, if you're truly in a mindset of marriage, somebody like Al doesn't, doesn't really fit. Word of advice to all the mothers out there, and it could be put to all the parents, but it's mainly mothers, because women, we tend to do this, we coddle boys. And this is what happens when you coddle a boy too much. He becomes self not self-reliant he becomes reliant on the mother and not self-reliant that's the problem so now she's crippled because her husband doesn't even know how to wash dish wash clothes i mean does he know how to wash dishes i don't even know but yeah it's this is not a good look not that way not that way not that way so i'm gonna have to youtube everything so there should be a scooper in there you've just kind of got to find it moving in together is absolutely going to show whether or not Al and I can realistically work. And then you can press start. That's it? Yep. So they didn't do the confessions, but they did do the couple ranking, right? He goes first, he ranks the the people like, what was he saying? Um, what did he say? Holly's too old looking. Uh, Dominica has short hair. He doesn't like that. I was like, oh my gosh, the young mentality is really showing. But um, he put his partner right up top with, I think she tied with um, Celine. So she was like, oh man, I feel bad. Cause when she did the ranking, she was basing it off of maturity, like guys who look a little bit more mature. So Andrew and, um, 
what's his name? Anthony were at the top. So she put him tied for third and he wasn't really uh, a fan of that. She put the guys who were more mature at the top. She mentioned they're a bit older, they're I guess more established. Definitely concerning because yeah, not really established. I still live with my mom. Seriously, you're up here. No, yeah. you're lying. I'm serious, you're definitely the hottest chick here. Cause I like your eyes, your hair. What yeah. an asshole. <sighs> These are her words. She likes a man who looks like he has lived, okay? And those two men have lived. Somebody DM'd me and asked me, what about Anthony and Samantha? I think on paper it would work besides the age thing. I think maybe the age might be too big, but in terms of personal characteristics, I do think that they would actually be well-suited, but that's just not how things worked out. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I hope that Al doesn't see this as like, oh, he must change in order to be with Samantha, but just maybe realize that I need to grow up for myself, not for this relationship, but I just need to grow up. This is not a way to live, not knowing how to do your own dish it. <laughs> I keep saying dishes. Not knowing how to wash your own laundry, not cooking for yourself. Like these are basic life essential skills to know regardless of marriage. So surprisingly enough, Anthony and Celine are not the most explosive couple of the episode. Um, they did move in, but in separate apartments. So they're still part of the process, which is more than what I thought they were gonna be, um, more than what I thought was gonna happen this episode. But they decided to do the letter writing challenge for each other. And Celine was the only one who shared her letter in this episode. I don't know if they're gonna get to Anthony's, but she talks about the difficulties in uh, giving birth and her postpartum experience. I'm not an emotional person, but I just, I don't know. Most yeah. of the time I kind of hold myself strong. I feel like I need to be, you know, for Roman. And I get it's very, well. it's very human, and it's very, it is, yeah, yeah. and it's very relatable. You know, like the sort of the baby blues, where you sort of like this melancholy. You don't know. What, yeah, what I know, it is, I know. know. And it's good to be aware that you know what you went through there. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to diminish her story. I felt like her story was very touching. Her story is one that a lot of women can resonate with, right? But I think with the place that they are in their marriage right now, it would have been nice to hear something that had to do with a relationship confession. You know, like maybe in the past I used to fall for ABC or maybe in the past I used to be like the one who would say this kind of thing, that what whatever the thing is, I wanted it to be more of a reflection on how she shows up in romantic relationships so that Anthony could get a clearer picture of what exactly is going on. Maybe that was an oversight on the experts. Like maybe they should have been a little bit more specific with their instructions, specifically for Anthony and Celine. But um, yeah, I, I am glad that she was able to get vulnerable. She seems to be letting her guard down a little bit. And she even said to him before he left, like, if you do want to talk, I'm here. Um, yeah, uh, mm. if they get back on good terms, I need her to circle back to everybody who she was talking crap about her husband to and 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 apologize and fix the situation. Oh, Celine. Tamara and Brent are next. And in Tamara's reveal, it was a self tape of her talking about the types of men she does not like. And it's all related to their socioeconomic status. If a guy wears fake designer clothes, if they drive a really ugly car and they don't have a good job or money, unfortunately, I'm just so not interested. That's a terrible thing to watch, obviously coming out of someone's mouth. I get it, like I sound like a dickhead. That even made me feel awkward to watch. Later on, she gets emotional talking about it and she explains that the reason why she says the things that she has said was because she's worked really hard to get to where she's at and she doesn't want to become somebody's caretaker. And although I understand that perspective, there is a way to say it that is not condescending, that's not, you know, rude. So I agree. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people see your success and they want to mooch off of it and it's worse coming from a partner. So she already wants to get with somebody who is established so that that isn't an issue. But there's a way to say it that's still like, you know, I respect all walks of life. I personally desire this walk of life. Brent was able to see, to see what she meant and it turns out they didn't consummate the marriage. Well, I don't know if they consummated the marriage, but he said they got intimate. 
which my assumption is sex. So it seems like they're on a positive trajectory, which is good. So before we get to Holly and Andrew, I, no, maybe I'll talk about this at the end because I was going to bring up another couple, but they come up in the next episode. So I'll just pause on them. So Holly, um, as they're moving into the apartment, decides to sage not only herself, but her husband and the apartment so that they expel any bad energy. Well, girl, I don't know if you had oregano or sage, but whatever you're burning was not working. King, the confessions that they did. So they did the confessions and the ranking, right? So starting with the confessions, um, Andrew said that he loves sex, loves it. He celebrates it. What are the words that he say? Um, he loves exploring it. He celebrates it. Damn near worships it, man. This man sounds like an infomaniac. I love sex. I love exploring sex and I love celebrating sex. I'm a very sexual person and had had roughly 350 sexual partners in the past. I found it so funny how he was like, oh, well, I kind of see it as a positive because you could benefit from my experience. Andrew, <laughs> she is in her late 30s. She's not 19, okay? She does not need to benefit from your experience. Oh my gosh, this man, like, I understand what he means in that, you know, I'd rather be honest than hurt her um, by lying, but there's some couth, there's some finesse, there's some tact in honesty, and Andrew doesn't have it. He just doesn't. So then it's, it's time for, um, <laughs> what's her name now? It's time for Holly to share her confession. And it's really the eagerness that she has for childbearing. She is older and she has a low fertility rate. So it's like really on the forefront of her mind. And Andrew's like, yeah, this might be too much. Andrew responded with warmth. He was very supportive. And so Andrew's reaction, I think, was the best I could have hoped for. And I can sense that there's urgency with Holly to have a child. I feel like it's almost too much pressure on me. Like we're still getting to know each other and I'm just not there yet with her. He was very comforting in the moment, but later on he realized that this is overwhelming for me. He already has a child um, and I guess maybe he just wants the one or maybe he just doesn't see himself having a child with holly from what he's seen so far i'm not quite sure what the hesitation is but he decided to you know um what's the word to be reclusive to kind of like uh, draw away from holly which you know doesn't make her feel desired right next day they're talking um doing the ranking thing and she's like well i would have put you first but as of late, I haven't been feeling desired by you, so I'm gonna put you second. And he's like, well, first of all, that's not my responsibility. I'm just being my authentic self as much as I possibly can. And if you're less attracted to me for me being authentic and honest, I'm okay with that. That doesn't hurt my feelings. In fact, you can put me over here and that's still not gonna change anything about the way I feel about myself. I'm happy about the way I've been honest with you. I don't feel responsible for how you feel. That's not my responsibility. So here's where I'm conflicted with them. Like, he makes points, but then he's so rude about it, so it's kind of hard to be on his side, right? I don't, I do agree with him when he says, it's not my responsibility to make you feel attractive in that she should have self-confidence in herself, right? But who doesn't want their partner to affirm them? She's not saying, I feel ugly, you need to make me feel beautiful, but she's saying, I do feel beautiful and it would be nice to hear some reassurance, some affirmation, affirm I said that word, some affirmation from you. And he is like, no, not my job. And I'm like, yeah, I can see why you've been through two marriages already. I can see it. I feel like he thinks he's more of a stand-up man than he really is in reality. And he's thinking, oh, but honesty is the best policy. So is kindness. 
Okay, so is kindness. So he's getting frustrated with her saying, um, well, you're trying to run away from the conversation and I'm trying to be here, you know, like let's get down to the root of the problem. And while she's trying to speak, he keeps cutting her off. Have you tried? And are you kidding me? I am present. You can talk to me any minute of the day. Any minute of the day I'm present. We're sitting there and we're watching it's TV. Hard to talk I to am having a conversation here and you're not listening. And this is why I told you, I told you, I told you you're not capable of letting me finish a sentence. I'm going to leave now, Holly. Good! Funny how he has no problem being brutally honest, but cannot take it when she's being brutally honest with him. And she's at her boiling point, and honestly, I would too. I'm not gonna lie, I do see Holly as being very intense. Sometimes the way that she speaks, I'm like, I, I could see how this could quickly rub somebody the wrong way. However, I side with her, I do. Here's a moment where I'm trying to be, you know, okay, let me tell you where I'm really at and you won't let me speak. I'm feeling undesired by you and you say that's not your problem. I'm sharing my confession with you and you recoil from me. Like what, what makes you think that I'm gonna wanna be committed to this if this is how you act? <sighs> All these couples are really just peeving me. I'm, I'm so confused. I used to say I wanna be on Married at First Sight, but now, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it is for me. The next episode, um, it's looking like it's going to be very touchy because Selena asks Cody if his lack of attraction is based on race. Oh, Married at First Sight is, oh, they're, they're coming in hot this season. They are coming in hot hot so what i wanted to touch on them before was that last night in the um at the dinner party there was a kiss between them i don't know if you guys saw this but he kissed her and so i was thinking wow maybe they've built attraction and the last little snippets that we didn't get to see irks apparently that's not the case so we're gonna see in tomorrow's episode what happens Oh, y'all let me know what side you're on with Holly and Andrew because I can't decide. I can't decide. I feel like they're both at fault in different ways, you know? So y'all let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.